Sorry you had to see that. You might be wondering, why am I wearing a plate carrier while shooting pumpkins? Well, maybe you didn't know, but I've done research. We've delved into the problems with pumpkins and the pumpkin industry. Most pumpkins are grown in China. Can we trust the allegiance Mike, of these what? I uh, got those pumpkins from the, the local farm downtown. Yeah, did, did the farmer tell you that he grew them here in Washington? Yeah, that's what, I, he, told I, you? I, that's I, what he would say. That's what he would say, but you know what? I don't trust them. They seem a little communist to me, and for that, there's only one answer. Let's go check out that pumpkin, see how it's doing. And, uh, you know, we're using experimental 5.56. Probably why, why it's uh, freaking gone. Oh Holy my shit. gosh, I don't even see a piece. No, no, it's here. <laughs> it's here, come, come look. Uh, so we got some... No, no, those are, is that pumpkin? I think, yeah, I think that's pumpkin. No, no, I think that's like the grass. The grass. Wait, there's no pumpkin. Well, looks like we found a really good candidate for pumpkin remover right there. If you've ever gone to a Halloween party and somebody came to that party dressed in the exact same costume as you, but better, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment, comment section is out of control. The biggest sponsor of this channel is, of course, Brown Elves. Go give them our support. We love them. And, of course, the sponsor for this video is Zydax Computers. Now, I actually know nothing about computers at all. Those My, computers slow. Yeah, they actually Yo, are really the good. The render time, cut in half. <laughs> they're super fast. So, your boy out here, gaming. We're starting a gaming channel very soon. And uh, they are absolutely awesome. They're supporting this channel. And they're supporting 2A. So, big thank you to them. Go check out Zydax Computers. Discount code grand and we can't forget skylag tactical huge holiday sales going on go check them out they rock they are good people ladies gentlemen often forgotten most certainly not by me pumpkins getting shot <laughs> welcome to the channel so with halloween literally today you know what that means not candy not diabetes but actually lots and lots of targets and uh in fact i got my start on this channel shooting pumpkins with an sks because there is no cheaper target after Halloween has passed. And so the question that I've always had has been, which caliber removes and kills pumpkins in the most spectacular fashion? Well, that experimental 5.56 really. <laughs> that, that did it the best. But, you know, for the purposes of like normal rounds that you're gonna be using, um, we've assorted a lot of different weapons and a lot of different common calibers, and we're gonna test out and see what kills a pumpkin the best at about seven inch feet or so because what's better than shooting pumpkins with your friends in early november honestly there's nothing more fun i have lots of fond memories of it so let's take a look at some of our weapons that we have so to start off with we'll be going over all these weapons as we pick them up but we have nine millimeter 45 50 action express 22 long rifle 556 and 40 millimeter i don't know why uh we of course got our 308 our venerable M1 Grand, which has been remo removing pumpkins for a very long time. The Benelli M4, a classic from the Marine Corps. And finally, the 50 caliber sniper from Halo. Just kidding, Sire 50. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get into it. So to start off with, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set up our first pumpkin. And uh, we're gonna start with 22, but the kind of the bigger question that I have is before doing this, you know, what is going to wreck the pumpkin in the most spectacular fashion? How do we just, you know, define spectacular? Well, it's, it's art, guys. You can't just judge art, uh, you know, based on a checklist. It's just whatever feels the best. But if we take a look at the weapons, I do believe that it's going to become, like, honestly, probably a close toss-up between the 12 gauge and, of course, the 50. The 12 gauge will be firing buckshot. I, I don't know, it's a real close to toss up because the buckshot, like we've seen it before, that thing is violent. I don't know, what do you think, Micah? Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, you're you're excluding the 50 Action Express, but... Um, the Desert Eagle, of yeah. course. And we are using um, kind of specialist, ra specialist rounds with that when we are using uh, Hornady uh, Critical Defense. I guess somebody out there is still carrying a 50 cal. Good for you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start this test out with the venerable Marlin 22. This was actually the 22 that my dad taught me on. So I have a lot of fond memories of this particular 22. And we're gonna be shooting it with just common 
22 ammunition, just basic um, federal ammunition that you can get at Walmart. I think that's probably the best test when it comes to this stuff because you really don't want to waste good ammunition on communist pumpkins. Local common <laughs> pumpkins. Common pumpkins. Yeah. All right, first test. 22 long rifle versus pumpkin. Is it going to go all the way through, Micah? Uh, no, no chance. Really? Uh, I guess there's not much in the middle of those. All right, we'll find out. Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, goodness. Straight through? Yo! Straight through? Straight through. Oh, that's a bigger exit. Yeah, that's actually a bigger exit wound. Apparently, your cheap ammunition is just wonderful. How comparable are these uh, to human heads, Mike? Absolutely the, the exact same thing. Now, that's actually really cool. I did not... I mean, there's not a lot through there, but, you know, still, you know, pumpkins are kind of tough, so you, you really don't know what you're... what's going to happen. Huh. Little TD exit. Sure enough. I think that bitch was tumbling when it came out, though. Yeah, you could hear it. That was cool. Well, next time we grant them. Okay. We're going to go ahead. We're going to rotate this guy. We're going to try with 9 mil because, uh, you know, obviously 22 is not going to just rip that thing apart. That pumpkin is still good. We want to make sure that we're, you know, using these uh, pumpkins in a way that is, you know, fair to the, to the other pumpkins out there. What am I doing with my life? All right, Micah, come on, bring it in. So let's take a look at this. We have a Glock 17 right here. This is a very common 9 millimeter firearm. Um, when it comes to 9 mils, guys, Tons out there, they're all great. Um, in this case, this is one of my favorite weapons, one of my carry guns, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna see how your basic nine millimeter ball, pretty cheap ammunition, will do when it goes through a pumpkin. Do you think it'll be better than the 22? Oh, there's no chance it's better than 22. I agree. You know? You know, it's pretty comparable. I really kind of thought there'd be just a little bit more you know what? Yeah. It's, you know it's the same. You, will you take a look at that? Just wait, wait here. Here, show us okay, the nine, okay. and then show us the twenty-two. <gasps> Yo, I this is you. earth shattering. I think twenty-two is a more deadly caliber than nine. Look at the little exit wound. Dang. FMJ every time. You know what? I here's what I think. All right, the twenty-two was a lead. Was just a lead bullet, right? Not plated at all. I, I'm pretty sure that little bitch deformed when it hit the pumpkin skin yeah. and just mushroomed out. And this guy just had so much energy, it just, you know, just. Buds everywhere, rejoice. We have the venerable 1911. Now, this particular bad boy right here is a Nighthawk. Very expensive uh, 45. They do cost around, I think, three to four K, but they are incredibly well-made, as you can see here. And they are just gorgeous. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna check out with our basic 45 caliber ball how this is gonna do through a pumpkin. Micah, predictions. Definitely the biggest uh, exit we're gonna have. You know, um, if you, <laughs> have you ever seen like a 500 pound JDAM like strike the ground and just blow no. up? Why would it? I'm just saying that as far as 45 is concerned, it did win two world wars. <laughs> just saying, man. Food for thought. All right, 45 caliber ball. Here we go, 230 grains of America coming right at you. Two world wars. Oh, we have a B on there too. <gasps> oh, can I get it? Yeah, I can. Oh. <gasps> oh, you got him. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yo, that be gone! <laughs> Yo, William Tell ain't got shit on me. Uh, real test now. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Okay, here we go. 45. Alright, let's go. Science is. Wait, what the? You need a minute? Okay. Very upset right now. We got, we got 22, <laughs> we've got nine mil, and we got 45. But you know what? I will give it to the 45 that it did kill that wasp, and I 
freaking hate wasps. So that makes me feel a little bit better. And it's proved its name and also pretty cool. Look at that wound channel from the 45 when it nailed that wasp. Gorgeous. Go gorgeous. You know, <sighs> damn it. I just really thought it would do better than that, you know? It's sad. There's only one way to finish this guy off, though. 100%. Desert Eagle. Yeah. Okay. It's not a gun. It's That's a tiger. A tiger. <laughs> Whatever form <laughs> it chooses to be in. All right, we have the tiger striped Desert Eagle. Why is it tiger striped? Well, I asked for a Desert Eagle back in the day in 50 Action Express, which is a ridiculous caliber. God, that's crazy. And uh, they sent me a tiger striped one because, you know, why not? Here's what I want to do with this one. We are going to shoot this at about seven feet again, but if it doesn't do anything spectacular, I think we're going to point blank this guy with the 50. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Because you know what? First off, I'm disappointed at how little damage these pistol rounds are doing, but I just want to see something die. You know, because these pumpkins just aren't doing much, and I just, I want them to... What are you here for, Mike? The violence. Speaking of the violence, go check out my t-shirts at Bunker Branding. Link below. Yo! <laughs> okay. Hold on. Let's get a shot straight through. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Can you see me through? Yeah. Smile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yo! Okay. <laughs> Woo. Wait, yo, do we gotta censor this? I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Uh, that is what I expected from like a 45, to be honest. I'm not even joking. Like, I thought I would give it a little bit more. I get it. You know, we were firing ball, and this is a hollow point. But still, that was pretty awesome. Uh, should we point blank this guy now? Oh! thought <laughs> just <laughs> yeah one, one more one more ready yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no yep oh Whoa. dude i'm covered gross that was awesome well that's how you remove the stem from a pumpkin oh, oh. Yeah. carving pumpkins yeah carving pumpkins that's all having a good time pistols completely underwhelming in my mind. Fun, for sure, because you can see the impacts, but, you know, the question is, as we get into our rifle calibers, what are we gonna see? We'll save this one for later, you never know. Got your basic 20-inch Predator AR-15 with uh, 55 grain ammo, and uh, this pitch is gonna be going, I don't know, like 32, 3300 feet per second, so. Spicy. Very spicy. Uh, what do you think it's gonna do? Uh, less than the pistols. You might be right. Yeah. Okay, let's find out. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Oh, nice. Nice. Very good. Science. Science. Is alive. Science is alive. Science is alive again. Um, that is what you would expect because the 5.56 is a tiny, tiny little round, right? Going super fast. And what the 5.56 has a tendency to do, especially, I have pumpkin on my glass, especially when it's going incredibly fast as it is from a 20 inch barrel, it's going to tumble and stabilize and fragment, which is precisely what we see here when it leaves that much larger exit wound. So that is classic 55 grain out of a 20 inch barrel and as they have always said about 20 inch barrels you are turning practice ammunition into duty ammunition so clearly we can't shoot this without shooting the 40 millimeter so we have a chalk plastic round it is not an explosive round but it does have the same weight and the same amount of velocity as an actual he round so the question is what is a 40 millimeter gonna do through a pumpkin? Pretty good contender for, I feel like, most spectacular kill. Yeah, we left that one out. Didn't think about it. 
You know what? It didn't occur. It's orange chalk on orange pumpkin. We might not even see what happens. Very Halloween. <laughs> Very Halloween like. All right. Uh, I don't think I actually need the uh, ladder site for this one. Whew. Damn. Oh, that was a good one. Look at that, you can see the cheesy impact. Gorgeous. The fracture along with the cheesy exit wound. Just chef's kiss when it comes to the 40 millimeter. I, don't, I had no idea what was gonna happen. That was pretty awesome, actually. <sighs> I guess the, the only thing we can go to now is the FAL. I feel like the FAL needs a go at this. The right arm of the free world, the FAL versus the communist threat and menace. What is a more classic tale than a Rhodesian FAL? So, we have our FAL with a authentic Rhodesian mag. Pretty cool little piece of history. I'm sure we get canceled for that. But, in any case, the question is, what is military M80 ball, which is about a 150 grain projectile, going to do when it's traveling through a pumpkin? Honestly, I'm not sure because the, the 308 has a lot of power and it's been known uh, in real life circumstances that have so much power that it will do a clean through and through because it doesn't lose enough velocity to start destabilizing and to tumble and to fragment. So I'm almost thinking this might just... Just be the worst one just, yet? Yeah, just like pencil yeah. straight through. I don't know. You, what do you think, Micah? It's, Prediction. It's, okay, yeah, it's got a lot of energy. Once it grabs that back, it might just pull more with it. That's a good question. Yeah. One that can only be answered. I'm not a doctor like you, though. I did quit med school. All right, let's get into it. Ooh. Ooh. Looks pretty spicy. That looked really spicy. Ooh. What, what did you, 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 come on, dude. Hold on. Hold your horses. So, okay. So, a lot of people throughout history have talked about how deadly the FAL is in various forms of combat. And you hear these stories and you're like, are these really real? And what's always funny to me is like time and time again when it's like, no, actually, like these are really good. So we have the entrance wound from the M80 ball, just like a, a, a standard military type round. This is not anything special. Um, you can see it right there. Just normal FMJ. And then, go ahead and see that exit wound. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> That is, uh, it's very impressive. So, so far, I don't you, oh my God, your entire oh, fist went through. Nice. nice. So I'm gonna say for right now, that as it stands, the FAL is currently the winner. Yeah, oh, definitely the 100 winner. 100% percent the winner. Even over the 40 mil. It, it didn't crack it, it didn't crack it. I'm not gonna disagree. Yeah. I'm not, you know what, hold on, let me see how many companies we have, okay. It's gonna be the Grand next. But that one's gonna be interesting. Let's go pick up the Grand and talk about it. After my namesake, the M1 Garand. You know, this weapon has served for a long, long time, from World War II through the Korean War. In fact, many regulars use it through the Vietnam War. And of course, more recently, you just see it pop up everywhere. The Garand is a very venerable firearm, is a semi-automatic weapon feeding from these eight round end block clips that are inserted into the weapon. Now, in the case of these rounds, it's a little bit unfair compared to the FAL, but you know what? We gotta ramp things up. So these are soft points for hunting. So I'm guessing that it's going to literally blow this pumpkin yeah. like huge hole out the back. Um, the 308 and 30-06 are actually, when it comes to the military loadings, very similar in terms of power. So I'm very interested to see how the good old M1 Grand does. Micah, what do you think? Oh uh, yeah, it being a soft point, I think we're gonna see just a lot of people. You know, it, and it should be noted how ammunition dependent a lot of these calibers are. So, with some good ammunition, let's go ahead and see what happens. Okay, hold on. I see daylight, so I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty brutal. Uh, predictions, Micah? Yeah, dude, I saw that. That's that's brutal. It's what that exactly was, what I said. You know the mist? I saw a lot that's of pumpkin. Telltale, telltale, <laughs> the, the telltale pumpkin mist. Um, 
think this is gonna be pretty, pretty good. All right, here we go. The big reveal, pretty freaking good. Where's um, the FAL one? Let's compare that. Oh yeah, yeah, let's look at the FAL. You know, you know, now to be fair, hold on. Fit, you, okay, fist it. You know what? Actually, kind of similar. Yeah. Huh. You know, my hand went in with just about the same amount of resistance. Okay, but look at the entrance. Uh, certainly with the 30 out six. There it is. They are the same diameter. So that soft point definitely had that deformation right off the bat, it looks like. Um, that is actually really interesting. I definitely expected more. But you know what? Hold on, take a look. You can see here, see the cracks oh, from the pressure? Yeah. We didn't quite have that with the 308 because of just SMJ yeah, just yeah. passing clean through. And then on the exit, let's see, looks like a few cracks there. And, and show them how big those cracks like go around on the other oh, side. Oh yeah, like you could see yeah. these cracks running. So you could see how much force that came out with and uh, pretty incredible overall. Jelly of my Benelli, the Benelli M4. The Marines combat shotgun is here to once again save the day. So the Benelli M4 is a semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun and this guy, um, it's just really good. And I, I think of every weapon we're gonna fire today, I do believe that the shotgun is gonna be the, just the, the stopper, the pumpkin stopper. Yeah. It's gonna be super violent, right? Pumpkin like, carver, you could pumpkin say. Pumpkin carver. So we're gonna be firing buckshot through this guy and, um, is this critical defense? No, no, because critical defense has such that small oh, okay, pattern. Okay. So I, I'm using cheaper stuff actually, and it should have a wider pattern. I really think at seven feet, we're just going to. I think that's my prediction. My prediction is we're gonna blow this pumpkin away. Nut up or shut up. Three, two, one. You know what? You know, I'm just I'm just wrong today. What? Well, it split the pumpkin in half. Okay, well, it, it but it, it, hold on. Set this up here. It split the pumpkin in half. Look at, that pumpkin was intact. We can't let, listen, Micah, science. I mean, clearly it did a lot of damage, but really, not as much as I thought, and maybe it's because pumpkins aren't a great medium for what you consider damaging from a firearm. I mean, we're in a completely different territory. We're not talking about killing humans and ballistic damage. We're talking about killing pumpkins. And the question is like, what caliber is the best? And apparently, like as cool as your 12 gauges are, like not as good as you think. Do you think maybe just like a little bit further to have like more pellet spread and? Yeah, you might be right. Should we flip it around, flip it on the side. Okay, Let's do we'll it flip again. it on the side. We're gonna try it from like a little bit further away and we'll see if that makes any yeah, difference. Yeah. I'm just not satisfied. Really? No. Why not? It split it in half. Or did it crack in half when it, it fell? It cracked when it dropped. Dang. Okay, clearly 12 gauge a lot more underwhelming. I'd say so far, actually, the outstanding performer is the FAL. The, oh, well, the 30 out six. I'm gonna give it to the FAL. Okay, okay. Because that's like standard FMJ. I yeah, think just. Right. Yeah, you're right. The FAL coming back for the win once again. Good job, you know, UK and everybody who adopted the FAL. That was clearly the right choice. I guess there's only one thing we have left to do at this point the 50. <laughs> Okay, the Halo Sniper Rifle. So we've got the Steyr 50, this is the HSM1. Um, we are fa firing your very normal full metal jacket, 50 caliber type rounds, and they are enormous. As you can see here, I'm gonna pop one out for you, if I can. Woo. That guy is huge. So we have the 50. Um, this is a bolt action. This is a very accurate weapon that we're gonna be firing from about seven feet, which is probably about a little less than the uh, length of the barrel. So this guy's gonna be cooking. And I really don't know what's gonna happen. Scott in the 50 cal test thought that it would go too fast and just do nothing. And that test proved him wrong. Oh, Scott's from Kentucky. He's, yeah, he's never been right. to school. So 
There's only one way to figure this out. We're gonna load it. Okay, so I fired a lot of 50 cal, and I wanna point out that the Steyr HS50M1 is a very heavy sniper rifle. So this guy has got some weight to it, but we're gonna give it our best. And for the first time in Grand Thumb, we're gonna 50 cal a pumpkin in half. First off, really light recoil because it's got a huge brake on it. Uh, actually, I want to see that. Go ahead and chuck that round out. Let's go check that. Okay, that is a very, that's, that is the biggest entrance that we have. And surprisingly, not as wow. big as you think. Yeah. You know what? Hold on, let's pick up the. Uh, Let's look at yeah, the FAL. That's, that's the FAL. Yo! Hold on, where's the M1? Uh, let's pull up the M1 as well, yeah. Well. Oh, dude, I can't get my fist in it. You know what? I, I really do think, with the 50, that we didn't quite have, like... All right, so this is a discussion. It's actually real talk right here discussion of why you have larger caliber rifles, right? You're launching a larger projectile, it's gonna be more stable through the wind, it's gonna be able to resist that more, and you're gonna be able to put more powder behind it with those larger rounds. But the point isn't for these guns to be used in close quarters. The point is, is that their engagement distance can be much further. So, you know, with the 50, that thing's just got so much speed. I actually do think it just, it just, now these are, these are pumpkins, there's no fluid. There's no fluid, so there's nothing for it to really do. And I think that 50's got so much ass that when it comes to killing pumpkins, like, it's just not the play. But you know what, what the play is? The FAL. You're right. But here's a bigger question. What happens if we line up like five of these pumpkins, and shoot the FAL through it? What do you think it's gonna do? Uh, go Venerable back. FAL, here once again, shoot through five pumpkins to see that's four pumpkins to shoot through four pumpkins because the other ones are pretty jacked up right now so four pumpkins fal fmj 308 what is going to happen original rhodesian fal magazine i can't wait to see man can we talk about how light the fal is like it is a really handy light uh, you did just finish handling that styre hs50 that's a good point i'm feeling pretty like i got bicep pump, you know? Feeling yeah. pretty good. Let's do it. All right, I'm gonna try to get it through all of them. Ready, Micah? Yep. You know, I think it did less than we... Oh, oh, oh. This is a crime scene. Sir, please, uh, please hold up. Okay. So, here's the entrance right here. Here is the exit. Whoa. Oh. Wait. You were not at that crazy of an angle. I think it deflected through it. It def- look at that. Yeah, hold on. Look, see the bottom? It deflected yeah. down. Interesting. And then, yeah, so it deflected so it down. All four, yeah. I might have aimed a little low, so let's try that one more time. There we go. Okay, so it entered right here, exited, entered, exited. Uh, looks like we had another exit, and then looks like it. Shotgun? Shotgun. Shotgun. Just one? Entrance. Exit, entrance, exit. Oh, look at that. You can see the spread. It's just exiting out the back. You oh yeah, what? it came out pretty slow. It did. Should we put a uh, federal slug through it? Yeah. Oh. 
Yo, that slug made it through and came out. Well, I guess there's only one way to finish this now. Guys, thank you for joining us for this Halloween special. Kind of stupid, but you know what? Um, shooting um, is something that's fun. And shooting pumpkins is something that I have done for a long time with my buddies ever since I was a kid up through college, just grabbing a bunch of cheap pumpkins and having a good time. So uh, if there's anything I hope that this can convey to you, it's just training is, of course, really important. And you should be training because, of course, um, we harp upon it a lot in this channel that training is important and that being the weapon is important. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with going out, clearing your head, having a good time with your buddies, and just shooting dumb shit like pumpkins. Now, of course, at your local ranges, make sure you clean this stuff up. This land is owned by us. We're going to clean this up in just a little bit. But in any case, um, the year is closing out. Hope you guys are staying safe. And we're just going to launch right into it. My dad advice for you is to make sure and enjoy life. Life can be fleeting at times. And enjoy it because it is a gift and I hope you guys are spending it well. Love you guys. We'll talk to you later.